I'm Marty and welcome back to C++. This is part two in the series. In this video, we're just gonna set up on Linux. And I got a haircut. Some people say haircuts are relaxing. No, they're not. Haircuts are a high stress event. But I think it turned out pretty good. It's a little shorter than I would have preferred. When it comes to haircuts, it's not a democracy. It's a dictatorship. Moms just don't get it. I wanted to just like shave this, just go and then just shave it bald. All my siblings wanted to shave me completely bald. Democracy has failed me. We're gonna be using Sublime Text as an IDE. To figure it out, I actually did a whole lot of hunting on the internet. I did a lot of reading documentation, a lot of forum browsing, a lot of stack overflowing, but I did find it. So this is probably the only video on YouTube that you can use Sublime Text as an IDE with C++. Now we're gonna set it up pretty similar to Windows. We're gonna be using Sublime Text and then G++. Now for if you had an API or an SDK, which an SDK, it's pretty much like a bundle of tools you can use to make games and all that kind of stuff. As an example, we're going to be using SFML just, just to example. Now I'm going to be covering Mint. If you have Arc based or Gentoo based stuff, it will probably be similar, but there are going to be some variations. If you got Gen 2 figured out and you got that installed and you got Arc installed, you probably know how to set up C++. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the software manager and you can use the terminal to install Sublime Text. So we're actually just going to go here. You can just click install, make sure it's the flat pack one, which is this one, I think. Of course, you're completely free to use whatever you want. If you want to use CMake or whatever, but we are going to set up Sublime Text with project files. This way, we actually only have to hit F7 to compile. Right. So you should have solved my text installed. You're going to open it up. I've got mine on the desktop here and it's going to start off with this super bland. Bleh. That looks pretty nasty. So let's go preferences. I always like to change the theme. The adaptive theme, in my opinion, looks a lot better. Next thing we do preferences and you actually go settings. We have to edit settings in this tab here a few things to disable. So the first one is open quotes underscore exit. So what, why do we have to disable this stuff? And that is because if we don't disable this, we are going to get some pretty annoying bugs for no absolute reason. I don't know if it's a feature or if it's a bug, but whatever it is, it is annoying. It'll basically have us when we run our project file, it's going to pop up two projects instead of one. Don't know why it does that, but we have to go remember underscore files. And we have to set that to, what am, why did I say true? It's gotta be false. That needs to be false. If it's true, it's gonna do the annoying thing. So control save that. Now as a kind of a defect, but not a huge issue, is if we type something in Sublime Text here, we close it, we don't save it, so close without saving, and then we open up Sublime Text, it's not gonna remember anymore, which is fine. We should be smart enough to close our files after we've saved. And let's take care of this really, this really, wow. That is quite the color scheme. So I'm going to go online a second here. This is actually just a post I made on Pastebin. You don't have to use this color scheme, but I'm making it so you can. This way, syntax highlighting will be the same and make it easier to follow along. So scroll down. The link will be in the description to find this. I don't think you can find this through browsing, so you're going to have to follow the link in the description. So copy all these lines with the exception of the first one because the first one is just a blank line. So control C, open up a text editor. Let's open up Sublime text because it's already installed. And let's just paste that right in there with control V. So if done right, you should have 501 lines of XML code. You can know it's XML code because Sublime text will tell you what you're dealing with in the corner there. So that's pretty awesome. Control shift save. Now where you save this does matter. So we have to go save this, go to your home folder. In my case, that's going to be Marty. And then inside here, you're going to have to go click show hidden files gonna look for one called dot config go in there you should see something called sublime text 3 it's in there packages user so save it as really whatever you want I'm gonna say 30 24 night custom because it's an adaptation of the 30 24 night custom file now just save it as dot tm capital theme make sure it's saved as that with that e in there and hit save if done right you should be able to go project or preferences color scheme and you should see 3024 night custom there we go so we got the color scheme set up you can close out of this close go control shift p again we're going to install the package installer or package control so install package control click that and bling all right so package control is installed control shift p again to open the command palette and now we should be able to find package control install package so click that it's going to load our repositories and then you got type hex and you should see hex viewer so click that we're going to install that one the reason we need hex viewer is because this way we can actually take a look at our binary files which is machine code 
we can, and then we can inspect that, take a look at exactly what happens in compiling and stuff like that. Just some cool stuff. All right, and that will install. If it installs, it will tell you right here. So you can close out of that. Go Control Shift P again. Package Control Install Package again. This time type Pack Edge Source Viewer. You're gonna go on and go with this one. So go Control Shift P. You should now see somewhere uh, Package Resource Viewer. Um, open resource. You're going to click that one. Scroll down, click default, and you're looking for something called exec.py. So click that, and that should open a Python file. Okay, and then we're going to scroll down. We are looking for something called finish, which will be around here. I think it's called finished. We will know it when we see it. Um, right here. So it's online. 356 if you don't know where to find it this line right here we need to take that out so you can actually just comment it out instead of deleting it so add a hashtag before it this will do something really annoying later this disables it that's what the little hashtag does hashtag in python that is a comment so that this is actually why i like sublime text because yeah it by default does have some annoying things enabled but you can disable them relatively easily so save that python file and you can close out of it next let's go preferences i like to go key bindings we're actually going to set a key to the hex viewer so copy one of these control c you can paste it right in there control v the command will be or the button the hot key will be f8 because f8 is available and the command is actually hex underscore viewer being sure we're spelling this right i before e except after c so go with the rule yeah doesn't really like typos does have to be like that mm -hmm. should be able to save that if done right you should be able to go tools packages hex viewer and you should have f8 right here so we can actually load this into hex with f8 it doesn't really know what to do because this is a json file and we can just close up. So set up, good to go. Right, now let's set up G++. So open a terminal, type sudo apt-get install G++, hit enter. All right, and it should install. As you can see, I've already got it installed. The next thing we need to install is actually SFML. So sudo apt-get install lib sfml-dev, just hit enter. Um, don't mess around where with this will actually install to this command will let it install to the default path That is what we want to do. It just makes it way easier if it's installed to the default path makes linking a lot simpler Okay, so the next thing we need to do is set up a file hierarchy Which is just a bunch of folders that our project file is going to use We can use the terminal to do that because we like the terminal the terminal is fun go CD, we're gonna make this one on the desktop. You could actually make it in your home folder. I actually have one there. That's why I'm making mine on the desktop because I don't wanna overwrite the one I have in my home folder. So CD, desktop, to go to the desktop, go MKDIR and make one call, a folder called dev. Dev just stands for development. It's where I like to do my development stuff. So CD, dev, hit enter and go MKDIR, which is to say make directory. And now you can make a directory of whatever you want. Now, if you have spaces in your folder's name, you're gonna need some quotes or escape characters, but quotes are much simpler to work with. Now you can really call this whatever you want here. If you're working on a game, like I don't know what's popular right now, Fortnite, it's kind of dying. Sea of Thieves, Apex, whatever you're working on, you would name it the name of your game. So in my case, it's just gonna be um, C++ Tutorial. Go CD. And if you type C, add a tab, it's going to autocomplete. You'll notice this little backslash here, and you may have seen that's a little weird. Backslashes are just escape characters, unless you're on Windows. And, and if you're on Windows, a backslash is a directory operator. I always do wonder about that, but the rest of the world uses a backslash as an escape character, which an escape character just says, okay, you got a space here, just ignore that, just go into that file so hit enter then go mkdir we're going to make a folder called source this is where we would store dot cbp files so those are c++ source files and we're going to want another one called include this is where we'd store header files so that's dot h files or dot hpp files and another one called bin bin is where we should store our outputted application and the final one I like to always go with is resources. So resources is where you'd store stuff like images, data files, font files. If you had models, if you're working on a 3D game, but let's go into CD resources in the resources folder. I always like to make a line called images, fonts, models, and just some good stuff. Oh, um, I'm supposed to go MKDIR to make a directory there that should work better. Now you can actually go LS to display the contents and we can actually rename this image to images by going MV, then image, and then add a space and then go images, hit enter. 
if we go ls again, we should see we have images. So perfect. Let's go back directory with cd dot dot. And let's also clear the screen with clear. And let's go cd bin or let's actually just go ls and see what we have. So we have bin include resource and sources. Perfect. So let's go cd bin inside bin go make directory. And we're going to make one called debug and one called game. I mean, release is what I meant to say. So the reason I have two folders here is the first one is debug mode which is slower than release mode, but it's better for debugging. Then we have release mode, which is not good for debugging, but is faster. So more frames per second, stuff like that. Good for release, good for actually playing the game, not good for making the game. So that's the difference. Hit enter, and we can actually open a file explorer. Just make sure they're all there. I'm gonna go to, uh, first I'm gonna stop showing hidden files. So let's go to the desktop dev and we should have c++ tutorial we should have bin debug and release something to mention here is if you do have models or images or textures in the, any of these every time you add a new image here that your program is dependent on you have to go control c and paste that in for debug and for release mode as well otherwise your game won't be able to work so this is the folder hierarchy good to go we can just drag this into the corner here use some smart snapping and minimize that and we can close out of this terminal close and the final thing we need to do is write a source file and compile that source file so let's start by going hashtag include and i like to save my files before i write them this way it decorates it nicely colors the syntax and stuff like that so i'm going to save it to dev c++ tutorial and source now for actually naming it the most common naming method of c++ source files is all little case that is the most common method although it's not like rare to see it's not like overly rare to see someone do that it's really preference but the most common method is to go like this which i think looks cleaner so save we're going to save it as that now it should highlight this as purple because it's a pre-processor statement so hashtag include and i'm not really going to go over how this code works in this video because explaining things when you can't run things is a little difficult so we're going to explain how this all works in the next video we're gonna, and let's go into main this is the entry point of the application. Let's go SCD, colon, C out. And we're going to say something like, well, I guess this worked. SCD, colon, colon, and L to end the line. Hit enter. And now to save this as a project file, you have to go project, save project as. Go back directory, and we're going to save it in this folder here. You can really name it whatever you want. And just make sure it's saved as a dot sublime dash project. I'm going to call it the name of the folder, C++ Tutorial. We're going to hit save. That alone won't do much. We have to actually edit this. Go project and hit edit project. And this will open up a JSON file, as you can see. This is why I like sublime text so much, because so much customizability. First thing we need to go is go folders, add a colon, hit enter, open some square braces inside there, open up some curly braces, go path or in quotes has to be path. So this will actually just display some nice folders along the side, kind of make it in it similar to an IDE, open quotes. And a little hack, I guess you could say, is you don't have to tell every single folder. What you can actually do is we can go into the bin folder and then go back out of the bin folder. And if we save that, it will display everything inside our project file or inside our project directory, which is awesome. Now we don't actually want to show this dot sublime project file because we already, we already got this project file open. So kind of unnecessary to do that. Eddie comment, hit enter, open quotes, go file underscore exclude underscore patterns. Make sure it's spelled right. Open quotes and everything that is a dot sublime dash project will not get included so if we go control save it should disappear perfect add a comma hit enter open quotes follow underscore sim links i believe this needs to be true i forget what it does i read the documentation and then i forgot what it does so yeah that i think needs to be true i forget what it does though so this way we can actually just close out of this this makes our jobs a lot easier and we can actually right click delete stuff, rename it, which is awesome, and open the continue folder. Now, the next thing is actually the more necessary thing, and that's build underscore systems. This is where we actually tell the compiler how to compile our code. We do need to have a comma before we add a colon here, and enter square braces, curl braces, and inside here, open quotes, type name. So we're going to name these. The first one will be build for debug if you actually go control save you should be able to go tools build system you should have build for debug perfect so let's actually do something with this working underscore dirt so that's the working directory colon open quotes add a dollar sign file underscore path forward slash dot dot all right and what this line is going to do 
is it's going to set our working directory back one directory, which will make our file hierarchy make sense. Add a comma, hit enter, and let's go CMD. So now we actually run a command. This basically will go, all right, sublime text, open a terminal for us, run some commands, which should be g++-c, src, everything that's a .cpp file, and, and so on and so forth. So that, that is actually what this line will do and open square braces. Now the command is g++ dash c, dash c says, okay, compile, don't link yet. We link separately because we actually, in our case, we're gonna have the SFML API to link over, or it's, or I should say the SFML SDK to link over to. So that's why we say compile first, link later. Now what we're gonna compile? Well, everything in the source folder that is a .cpp file will get compiled. Here we can actually add flags. These flags are kind of like options we can check off, say, yep, do this option. And the first one is STD, set that equal to C++ 14. Now this is which version of the language we're gonna go with. 14 is a good version, we're gonna roll with it. Next one is dash W, make sure it's capital W, all. So dash W all says display all warnings to the console, which is helpful in debug mode. Now with this enabled, if we did something dumb and we created a variable that didn't do anything, it's gonna warn us with this option. If we have this option enabled, it's gonna say, hey, you got an unused variable here, maybe you should take it out. So we can actually leave that in and we'll see that it does warn us. Dash G, this says run this in debug mode. And the next one is dash M64. So what dash M64 it says is run the, compile this and compile a 64-bit application. If you wanted to go with a 32-bit application, you could go with 32. APIs and SDKs, which are libraries, do have to correspond with the version of your compiler. So we've got G++. If we tried to go 32-bit and we tried to use SFML with that, we'd have some errors. That's because right now, SFML only supports 64-bit Linux. It supports 32-bit and 64-bit Windows, but doesn't support 64-bit and 32-bit Linux. Of course, there are steps we can do to build our own 32-bit SFML, but that's kind of complicated, so just go with 64-bit. Most machines these days are 64-bit. If you've ever seen the x86 underscore 64 architecture, that's what the 64-bit is. Is it confusing? Yes, very confusing. I didn't design the system. I don't know why they designed it like this. So 32-bit is just x86, so that's 32-bit. Pretty much everything in the text industry has really weird names. You get Intel, they've got their i3s, and then boom, i5. Don't know what happened to i4, but, and then i5, and uh, skip six, i7. Maybe they just don't like even numbers. I don't know. So that's all the flags we're gonna have here. So I'll say, and, so this will say, all right, if this here runs and it runs successfully, successfully, so I was trying to say, do another command. And this command is G++, this is where we link. Now this command here will actually generate a whole bunch of .o files, which will actually I'll put right here. So this command will generate some .o files and then we've got to link those .o files. So everything that is a .o file will get linked together. Dash O says output this to a custom directory, which will be bin forward slash debug forward slash main and so if that runs correctly then actually run that so dot forward slash on linux is how you run things bin forward slash debug forward slash main hit enter open quotes selector and you got to set that to source to source dot c plus plus comma here open quotes shell and that's got to be true this should work so control save go to main.cpp tools build system click for build for debug and hit f7 so first of all it warns us it says all right in your main function here in the main entry point which is right here warning okay you have an unused variable it's called name and then it tells us why i outputted this it outputted this because the dash w all option which is right here actually triggers a whole bunch of different dash w options which in this case is dash w unused variable so this just explains why it told us this so now i can copy this copy this build system, control C, add a comma, hit enter, and paste it again. Instead of for debug, release, and we will output this to release, release, and instead of debug, we will output this to release. All right, so release doesn't differentiate too much from the flags we actually call. We just take out these debugging flags and replace it with dash capital O, Make sure it's not a zero, make sure it's capital O, three. Now this will make the compile time a little longer, but it will make your runtime. So when you actually run the game, you'll get better frames per second. It's gonna be faster. It will actually make the size of the file, of the game file, a lot smaller too. So this is what we want. 
for release mode. Control save that and we should be able to go main.cpp tools build system build for release hit f7 as you will see it actually won't warn us because we told it not to warn us about all this stuff and alongside here we can actually go bin debug and we have main here and we have main for release as well right on and that is it we are completely set up now i did say i'd be covering sfml so let's cover it now what if we did link to sfml well, right here in this linking line, this is why we have linking separately. In the line that links, which is the second one, we have to go dash L SFML. And these flags really do depend on your API or SDK. If you're using OpenGL, I believe it would be dash GL, and you'd be fine with that. In SFML's case, it's dash L SFML dash graphics. It actually has a few here. You'd want to check out your documentation of your API or SDK. So let's scroll over here and L SFML dash window and dash l sfml dash system sometimes the order does matter so keep that in mind the and dash l sfml dash audio dash l sfml dash net network right copy that control c and paste it right in here for release as well Control V. Alrighty, so let's test it out now this is just a little example code this here loads up sfml and also renders a texture to the screen so let's try it let's start with tools let's start with debug mode and hit f7 it'll warn us and we have our sfml window perfect and we've got our little texture here loaded to the screen let's also make sure this works for release mode as well just to be sure and we don't get our warning and it does render our, our texture to the screen perfect so in resources here in images you can see i do have a texture whoa i did not even know that sublime text could do that that is really cool you'll notice that i don't have this in resources for here you'll notice that oh that's a little empty so that's not good we got to copy this so let's just right click on it and open containing folder we can copy that image Control c i'm gonna have to paste it into bin for debug resource images paste it in there that i have to paste it in for release as well so this way i should actually be able to go right click open a terminal here dot forward slash main hit enter and as you can see this is a release mode doesn't give us any warnings it says well i guess this works we are completely set up good to go all right so i'm going to take out these flags because i don't need them we're not going to need these for what we're working with because we're just learning to code so we can take out these flags and we still should be able to compile our code considering of course we take out the sml dependent stuff yep works for debug and works for release all right, we are completely set up with C++ on Linux with Sublime Text. And actually, if we close out of Sublime Text, we opened up a new Sublime Text, and we tried to go Tools, Build System. You'll notice we don't have our build for debug and release. This is because build systems only apply to projects, which makes it super useful because some projects we won't use SFML, some projects will use OpenGL. So it's useful to have different project files, different build systems. The last thing I want to mention here is that if you did install a library to a non-standard path, in addition to the dash L SFML stuff, you'd also have to add a dash dash I here and then actually specify to the path to the include folder of your API. So if you had tucked this sucker in user somewhere, and then you had your API, whatever it was like um, SFML, and then you'd need to go into include. And you'd also have to do the same thing here. You'd have to go dash capital L and then specify, okay, say we had user, we'd pop the sucker in user. Linux makes it easier for us, so don't install stuff to non-standard paths. It just makes everything a little bit harder to do. Although sometimes you might be required to install stuff to a non-standard path. So that's why I showed you, just in case. Good to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have a question, comment, concern, let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you. In next video, we're going to take a look at our Hello World program here. We're going to take a look at how this works. How is this compiled? How is it linked? And then how does it run? So when I say this video series is simple C++, I don't mean I'm not going to do advanced stuff. I'm just going to teach it the way it should be taught. Simple. People always say, yeah, go with Python first. They say, C++ is scary. C++ is a more advanced language. I can kind of see where they're coming from. But the thing is, you don't have to use all the advanced features of C++. You can totally live without pointers and stuff and memory management and like, you can live without actually knowing any of that. It's just, it's there if you want to learn it, which it's recommended you do learn it because then your program will run faster. But Python, you kind of, you can grow to here. You can learn this much and then you're kind of stuck. C++, you can grow to here and then you can keep going if you want to. So yeah, it's 
kind of, it's a real misconception that C++ isn't a beginner's language. Python isn't a beginner's language because Python doesn't really teach you how to code. You know some coding, but you never have to deal with data types. Not too much, really. You never learn how memory management works. So yeah, I'm really enjoying making this series so far. Hope you're enjoying it. That's what's planned for next video. So stay tuned and I'll see you next video. Time to edit. Bonus feature. Uh, yeah. This is the second time I recorded this video too because I recorded this video all nicely and then I was like halfway through the video I'm like hmm I want to listen to some music so I popped on my little headphones I was listening to music away and then I went to actually edit the video and then I realized I had the music on the same track soundtrack as my voice and there's no way to separate it so if I left it in that probably result in a copyright strike and I don't want a copyright strike on my channel my channel has the good the good green guy. Anyway, see you next video.